This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. And welcome to another edition of Hawaii in Uniform. I'm your host, Calvin Griffin. For, excuse me, for those of you who may not have seen the program before here, we talked about a lot of issues that concern the veterans and military community, along with what's happening, the interaction with the, um, the military, uh, with the civilian population. Uh, in the past, we mentioned there's a lot of different things that goes on as far as uh, different programs to help the active duty and the veteran community. But uh, a lot of times you may not be aware of um, all the programs out there. And if you're a veteran or you're still active duty, um, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to go ahead and bring you information that will help you to update, you know, some of the things that you may not be aware of. Um, if you're a dependent, same thing, which we want to do is uh, you may not be aware of a lot of the benefits that you have. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing here. And if there's anything, uh, again, standing invitation. Um, my policy, if we say anything here on the program that you hear that you may feel an error, especially myself, give us a call, contact me, and I'll let you correct me on the air if we do, if I do misspeak about anything. But again, we're trying to be informative, not insightful, um, or as far as incite any type of negativity, but we're here to help uh, not only the veterans and military community, but also, again, to make the um, civilian side more aware of what's happening and the contributions of those individuals serving our country now. Today, I have some three special guests. I have Mr. Rory, uh, Rory Driscoll, uh, Ms. Oriana Franklin, and also Raleigh Alvarado. And thank you for joining us on the program. Thanks for having us, Calvin. Thank we you. appreciate it. Good. Okay. Let the fun begin. Anyhow, Rory, I'll start off with you. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and the organization that you represent. All right. My name is Rory Driscoll. I'm uh, representing the Mission Continues. I'm a outreach coordinator, communication specialist for the Honolulu 1st Platoon. Mm -hmm. um, Mission Continues is a veterans organization that um, empowers veterans to come back into their communities after doing their military service. and and work in those communities with uh, nonprofit organizations to really give back and, and show that veterans are a uh, valuable part of our community. Yeah. Um, they offer a fellowship program that you can go through for six months and um, work with whatever nonprofit you want. A lot of uh, veterans that have gone through the program, um, it's been over a thousand so far that have gone through a fellowship program. Mm -hmm. um, they're able to expand their, their career options. They get to choose what they want to do and where their passions lie. Uh, for myself, I went through in 2012, and uh, I'm a marine biologist now, so I was able to utilize that fellowship to work with some nonprofits that are in the environmental side of the, uh, of the community and really build my career skills up and do an internship that allowed me to follow my dreams and passions after service. Great, okay. Uh, what other organizations do you work with? Again, we talk about the networking and a lot of uh, different organizations out there, but for some reason, in a lot of cases, the dots are not being connected. Uh, what, are there any major organizations locally that you're dealing with or on a national level besides, you know? Absolutely. Um, so I, I've worked with the Mission Continues. I'm also part of the Wounded Warrior Project, and I've worked a lot with them. Um, Raleigh here is representing Team Red, White, and Blue, which is also one of the organizations that the Mission mm -hmm. Continues works with well, as well as IAVA. Um, there's a, a myriad of organizations that are out there that are helping veterans get to that next level and transition into the civilian life after they've done their, their time in, in service. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the things that we've, we've come to discuss is yeah. how, do we, how do we bring those together and how are we able to form those relationships and expand that network to get, reach those veterans that, and show them the opportunities and the uh, benefits that they have for them as well as keep that sense of community that you only get while you're yeah. in the military and be able to keep that camaraderie and mm -hmm. have those, those like stories and those like experiences and be able to tell sea stories or war stories that, to someone that actually understands them and keep that community very strong as well as, you know, control contributing to our, our civilian communities as much as we possibly can and make it so we have a great place to live. Great. Ms. Franklin, uh, may I call you Oriana? Yes, please. Okay. A little bit about yourself. and. Uh... Well, um, I am the project coordinator for the Mission Continues, mm -hmm. so I'm in charge of choosing a site on the island that needs some type of beautification, and we go and we connect with them and through our project um, to to make it better. Our goal is to leave it better than how it was. Mm -hmm. um, also is to empower future generations. Yeah. 
So, you say beautification, what exactly does that entail? Uh, it's anything from building benches to painting to construction to landscaping. Mm -hmm. um, usually we have, um, usually we'll do the walkthrough on the site to see mm -hmm. what really needs to be done or really needs to be um, made, you know, better for the, the people that are using that. Yep. And um, we, we do a project and do yeah. that. Are you involved in any projects? Because over here we have a homeless veteran issue, you know, going on. Do you guys deal with anything like that? Or <coughs> well, right now um, the mission continues has a two-year contract with Blaisdell, mm -hmm. um, where we go and we clean it um, quarterly. Um, we also have a project coming up that isn't for the veteran, uh, for the homeless community, mm -hmm. but it's for the the Hawaiian community, and it's going to be the Boys and Girls Club yep. um, in honor of MLK, January 13th. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, the thing is there's a lot of different aspects too, you know, with the different organizations sitting out, so it's not always, you know, the heavy issues we're dealing with, you know, with the homeless and everything else, but again, it shows what is happening with uh, those who serve, who you don't want to give back to the community, you know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, when the, uh, the attitude that a lot of our uh, service members or veterans have is that, when you get out, your duty didn't stop when you took your uniform off. You know, when you swore to uphold the Constitution and all these different things, that continues on, you know. And a lot of people don't, are not really aware, you know. They take things, so many things for granted, you know. And right. you have people who walk to walk and talk to talk. And again, you know, you're getting out and you're giving back, you know. And a lot of people will say, well, why are you doing this? Well, that's my obligation, you know. That's the way I feel inherently that we should be doing anyhow, you know. Right, that's one of the uh, Mission Continues big points is, uh, you know, on a lot of our T-shirts it'll say, and one of the big slogans is reporting for duty within mm -hmm. the community. Yeah. Um, we. We look at it as we, we are valuable members of our community and a lot of us are, this isn't where we grew up, this yeah. isn't, but this is where we've decided to make our home and we want to be able to contribute to our local communities as yeah. much as possible by getting involved in them and knowing that, you know, you have leaders that are from the military, we've done our service, we've put in our time, we've yeah. definitely gained a lot of skills at, you know, taxpayer expense, so to speak. Um, we want to be able to turn those skills and those leadership skills around to make our communities better for everyone that lives in them. Not just the military community, yeah. but the homeless community, as you said, um, and schools like the Boys and Girls Club. That's the next generation that's going to come through. And we want to make sure that we're a shining example of how to be leaders within the community and make sure that we are doing everything we can and to continue that duty of making where we live in our great country, yeah. you know, that much better every day. I'm going to touch on the leadership thing a little bit later anyhow, but Mr. Alvarado, may I call you Raleigh? Yeah. Okay. A little bit about yourself and the organization. Uh, so I uh, I am the Veterans Engagement engagement Director for Team Red, White, and Blue here on um, Honolulu. Mm -hmm. um, this is the only chapter that's here in Hawaii, but um, we are a a uh, national um, organization um, started out in 2010 uh, by, uh, by um, Army veteran um, and uh, basically the mission is to uh, enrich the lives of American veterans uh, and we do that through um, three different components or core uh, basically uh, people uh, meaning connecting veterans to the community uh, with each other and then um, health, so providing uh, physical or social activities mm -hmm. uh, throughout the community, and then um, and then purpose, uh, finding uh, a purpose for veterans to uh, get out there, connect with each other, and, and just be out and doing activities, projects, uh, which uh, brings us to work with different organizations like the Mission Continues, uh, Wounded Warrior Project, and Team Rubicon. Yeah. Um, yeah. You didn't mention, like, say, about leadership, you know. Uh, for me, uh, my, my thing is that um, people say, well, well, where is the next leader coming from? And I, to what I tell people, if you want to see the next leader, look in the mirror. That's where that leader comes from, you know. And for a lot of times, like, with the so-called leadership that we have as far as our elected officials and things of that nature, some of them need to go back to school, you know, and find out what's going on. So when you have individuals like yourselves and the organizations that deal with these different issues, you know, that takes leadership also, you know. So sometimes they have to step up to the plate, you know, and you have to remind them, you know, that they work for us, not the other way around, mm -hmm. you know. And again, you know, the leadership building that up by, by setting the example, which, you know, you're doing in a very stellar way, 
that does, you know, a lot of people out there, the young kids nowadays, things are so convoluted, you don't know what's up or what's down or whatever, you know? So you need a point of reference, you know, that compass, you know? And when you have individuals who have been out there and served and do believe truly what's going on, we don't have a perfect system, but the bottom line is we believe in it. You know, we're the ones that keep things going, you know? And when you do take the leadership role with, by getting engaged and being involved in a lot of things, it does help, you know? It does that ripple effect, you know? So, you know, you guys are doing a great job anyhow. All right, there's, you know, 1% of the U.S. population that served in the U.S. military throughout all of its history. Mm -hmm. So your leaders are your 1%, which have already learned, and we've learned those leadership skills through our taxpayer dollars of serving in the military. Yeah. We've taken that opportunity to volunteer and take that next step. And then when we get out, we want to be able to continue that within our, our local communities and on a bigger scale, larger scale. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of ways that veterans are getting involved in politics, so we can make sure that we do have leaders that we trust and can stand by. Uh, the original founder of the Mission Continues, Eric Greitens, is now the governor of Missouri. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a Navy SEAL, a Rhodes Scholar. He's <coughs> gone through that time. Yep. And he's shown the path that veterans are able to take leadership roles and really change their communities on a large scale as well as a small scale that we work on right. with the local communities. Yep. Good. Uh, you all have combat experience? Yes. Okay. The reason I bring that up, and I know that a lot of people when you do go into combat, uh, of course, you hear people sitting around and tell war stories and everything else, but most of them haven't been there, done that, or anything else, you know. But the reason I wanted to bring that up, you know, to the attention of the public, especially as far as with the um, the female soldiers, anyhow, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you've done quite a few combat missions. You yes, know? I have. And again, that's some of the things that, you know, we were talking a little bit offline about some of the things that people may not be aware of. Right. And again, that's the contribution, like say, the unit that you're with. Sometimes the front line can be anywhere, it's just so much, you know. And uh, it's not just a male-dominated, you know, type of uh, environment, you know. Well, it is male-dominated. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. But just because it's male-dominated doesn't mean that there aren't strong females that are incorporated with the dominancy of, of the males in the military. Yeah. Because we are still, um, we're, our numbers for females are, are um, not as large as males serving. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't take away from... Um, us actually doing hand-in-hand -hand what male soldiers do. Yeah, because uh, yeah, you hear about so many different things. Um, again, there was a documentary I mentioned I'd seen before called The Invisible War uh, about the uh, sexual abuse of women in the military, you know. Um, but again, a lot of people think because it comes and it goes. Like I say, it hits the, the media uh, for whatever reason, and then it fades away, and people think, well, something must have been done, you know. And a lot of pe people mis uh, mistake activity for action, you know, yeah. just because there's a lot of running around, cameras flashing and all that stuff, no, there's a lot more that has to be followed up on, you know. That's so. also what the misconception is for females in the military, yeah. too, that is that, uh, you know, military trauma for females is sexual, you mm -hmm. know, that's the, and the, the misconception is that not all women um, that have had uh, trauma in the military is sexual, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a large number of females that are in the military that have had no sexual trauma mm -hmm. and have had all combat trauma. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's one thing, because uh, um, what I noticed and you hear about, uh, what you rarely hear about, you know, again, unless it's a big um, deal or, you know, I mean, it's been brought to the public's attention, suicide rates, you know. And again, especially with the psyche of most people is that, you know, you get out there, you do your job, whatever it is, you're not looking out there to take any lives whatsoever. But the thing when it does happen, that is a very traumatic experience, you know, and especially if you're a parent or whatever it is in the combat environment that a lot of people serve in nowadays, uh, you know, they say collateral damage, but the thing is, when they put it on a human level where a child gets killed and you're there, and you can relate to it because you have a child at home, you know, that, I mean, that really takes a lot out of a lot of people, you know. So, yeah, it may crosses the line, you know, but I know that there's certain things that are, very, are unique to uh, some of our female soldiers, but doesn't mean that across the board, you know, it's not all bad, you know, in a lot of ways. But um, it seems like, is there any progress that's being made along those lines? I mean... As in what? Um, we hear about, I mean, like I say, when something comes up, it's like, okay, well, we got a new program coming out, we're going to get people more aware of what's happening, and then after a while, it fades away. Are there any... T um, really hardcore, anything that came out that has really been positive in a sustaining way that any of you have seen? 
Um, I think organizations like Team Red, White, and Blue and the Mission Continues uh, Wounded Warrior Project have really created a network of veterans that are able to, you know, combat, like you were saying, with the uh, veteran suicides. We're able to combat that 22, reported 22 a day. There are significantly more. Some of those numbers don't include oh. California and Texas. I believe New York is one of the other one. Um, there's a lot more out there, but organizations like the Mission Continues, Team Red, White, and Blue, and a lot of the other veteran organizations, they create a network, so we're able to look out for each other. Just like when we were in the military, we always looked out for each other and had you know, the buddy system, so to speak. We have that now, when it's just uh, incumbent on those of us that have maneuvered through and transitioned properly from active duty to um, civilian life to make sure that we're looking out for those those potential vulnerabilities in some of our veteran brothers and sisters that, okay. that have to experience that. What, at this point right now, I'm sorry we don't have enough time, but we're doing, we're going to do a follow-up program anyhow because we do have uh, some other information we have to get out. But I want to thank you for coming to the program, sharing with what you know what you have. We'll go ahead and help to disseminate the information as far as contact information you know in the f for the future. And uh, but you're welcome back at any time. And again, I really want to do a real follow-up. You know, so we have more time to go ahead and deal with this because it's so important that all this information gets out there. But uh, I want to thank you again. We're going to take a break in a second. But I want to thank you, like I said, for coming in and sharing your experiences and also about your organizations. I oh, appreciate Thanks it. Thank us. you very much. Appreciate okay. it. Okay, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back in a second. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Aloha, I'm Prince Dykes, the volunteer host of the Prince of Investing. Think Tech is important to me because it brings Hawaii's number one financial literacy show around the globe. For the first time, Think Tech Hawaii is participating in an online-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000. Give thanks to Think Tech. We'll run only during the month of November and you can help. Please donate what you can so that Think Tech Hawaii can continue to raise public awareness to promote civic engagement through free programming like mine. I've already made my donation and look forward to yours. Please send your tax deductible contribution by going to the website thinksforthinktech.causevox.com. On behalf of the community enriched by Think Tech Hawaii, 30 plus weekly shows, thank you, mahalo for your generosity. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Aloha, I'm Glenn Martinez. I'm the volunteer host of the Aquaponics Show that we come once a week. You know, Think Tech is important to me because it gives me an avenue to share what we do on Olamana Gardens and the other community participation in the aquaculture world and at regular agriculture also. And now for the first time, Think Tech Hawaii is participating in the online web-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000. Give thanks to Think Tech. We'll run only during the month of November and you can help. Please donate what you can so that Think Tech Hawaii can continue to raise public awareness and promote civic engagement through free programming like mine. I've already made my donation and look forward to yours. Please send in your tax deductible contribution by going to this website, www.thingsforthinktech.causevox.com. On behalf of the community enriched by Think Tech Hawaii's 30 plus weekly shows, thank you. Mahalo for your generosity, and we look forward to you. Yeah, okay, and you're back with Hawaii in uniform, and again, I'm your host, Calvin. Uh, we're going to do, uh, for those of you who've seen the previous segment, we will be doing some follow-up on that. Uh, there's some very important uh, programs out there. But right now, I'd like to uh, introduce to the program Mr. Uh, oh, Ms. Marina Flowers. Martina. Martina, and also Dennis Sege, who's been on the program before. Uh, yes. May I call you Martina? Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Sure. Um, well, my name is Martina mm -hmm. uh, Flowers. I'm originally from Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, right after high school, I joined the U.S. Navy. Mm -hmm. I always tell people it's one of the best decisions that I ever made in my life. Okay. Um, wouldn't change anything about it. Got a chance to grow up, learn a lot. Mm -hmm. um, right before moving to Florida, right before moving to Hawaii, I lived in Florida. Okay. Uh, found this amazing organization that I'm now a part of called VA Rep. Oh, okay. What do they do? 
VA REP stands for Veteran Association for Real Estate Professional, uh -huh. and our goal and our focus is on military and the veterans, uh -huh. um, help to increase um, sustainable housing, home okay. ownership, uh -huh. and financial literacy and education amongst the veteran and the military community. Do you work with the VA in any way whatsoever? Or? No, Just not through? not directly, indirectly uh -huh. through volunteer and outreach uh -huh. events. Okay. Um, what if, I know you're involved with another organization also, right? Other than VA Rep? Yeah. The, so we also partner with various organizations. Oh, okay. So um, I know you just had a group up here, to, mm -hmm. um, the Michigan Contenders and also Moe's Heroes. Mm -hmm. um, these are all different volunteer um, nonprofit 501c3 organizations <coughs> that um, we volunteer and we assist in the community. So it's kind of mm -hmm. like brothers in arms locking arms together and seeing what we can do in our community, but also supporting other <coughs> veteran um, organizations that's a part of outreach, that's that's a part of education, that's a part of getting a community involved. So yeah. Most Heroes is a homeless outreach um, that they feed homeless people generally on Thanksgiving. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know. No, it's okay. <coughs> Pardon me, I get all choked up. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> Dennis, um, you've been listening to what we've been talking about in the previous segment. <coughs> Pardon me. Woo. Um, what do you think about some of the programs that's going about now? And are there dots being connected with a lot of the groups? Well, I'm waiting for the uh, <coughs> for the Veterans Administration to step up to the plate and, and take responsibility for the veterans who are all in their charge. I think there are, what, 20 million of them? Uh -huh. I got that information uh, when I was on uh, Veterans Day at the Natatorium. Yeah. And I think that, uh, I don't remember if it came, it came from... Uh, a Congresswoman Kelsey Gabbard or one of the other speakers at the time. So there's 20 million of us out there. We're all in the charge of the Veterans Administration, and they keep outsourcing uh, the outreach yeah. to other people. And uh, I'd like to see that end. Yeah. Either that, or I'd like to see the VA uh, kind of cut outsource their services to the people who are actually doing the work, uh -huh. and uh, maybe you can fund them. Okay. Okay. A little bit more about. <coughs> oh, sorry. Water for you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a little bit more about your organization. So VA Rep is a national organization, and we have a total of 34 ch chapters nationally. Mm -hmm. We have chapters in Florida. We have chapters in, in California, which our organization started actually in California by fellow veterans. Um, we also have organizations in Arizona and just statewide. Um, we have two um, mm -hmm. that I'm proud to talk about yeah. um, here in Maui. We just opened up our Maui this year, our Maui chapter, and then we we have our Honolulu chapter. Yeah. So we consist generally of eight board members. Half of the board members have to be prior military service. Mm -hmm. um, we just feel like it's best that way as we're advocating for veterans and active military. Um, <coughs> we've been there, we wore the uniform. Um, we have kind of um, a heartbeat of some of the things that's being dealt with. So as we go and we advocate for veterans, um, there's no better person to advocate for a veteran other than a veteran, someone who served. Some of the other things that we do once a year, we have what we call a policy conference where every June we go down to our state capitol and we arranged to meet with our prospective senators. Mm -hmm. So this past June, uh, we met with our state senators and we met with our councilwomen. Mm -hmm. And um, we met with Hannah Busa, we met with Senator uh, Macy. Yeah. Um, you know, they welcome us in every single year. They're very attentive yeah. to some of the things that we have to say. Yeah. We've been able to lobby and get bills passed yeah. on behalf of, of military and veterans as mm -hmm. well that goes in their favor and that um, addressing issues that need to be addressed to make sure every veteran who's trying to qualify and get approved for a loan, like there's no um, issues with that whatsoever. So those are some of the things that um, we've been able to do um, on a grander scale. Another thing we've been able to do is donate over 24 mortgage-free homes to um, to worthy veterans, yeah. to our veteran heroes. And that's something that I'm definitely proud of. I'm definitely proud that our organization is able to do. Um, we want to combat, ideally we want to combat homelessness. Mm -hmm. I know you talked about the veteran suicide, which is something else 
that we're part of doing as well. But the other part is the part of that the piece that we focus on as far as the education. That is to we know in all it won't um, a hundred percent get rid of veteran right. um, homelessness. Right. But our goal is to be able to on the onset of it deal and properly position the military active person or now veteran in a financial situation and providing that education so they won't see themselves on the side of homelessness. Right. Now, some of the veterans that we have been able to provide a home for, mm -hmm. um, like I mentioned earlier, we've been able to provide 24 mortgage-free homes. Um, we partner with several companies. Um, one of the biggest companies is Bank of America, Chase. You know, they help partner with us in making sure this happens. Right. This could be a veteran who, um, they were in the military, they got out of the military. Um, one of the families that we just donated a home to in Florida uh, just last month, as a matter of fact, um, he's a prior service army. He got out of the military. He was suffering from PTSD. They had two children, and the wife wasn't working, um, but the husband was, and he ended up losing his job because of his um, condition. And so we were able to find, he was able to find us, and by way of finding us, we um, there's an um, intake process um, where we kind of evaluate the situation, find out if this is something that we can do for this veteran, and we were able to bless them with a the home. Right. One of the things that... Dennis and I have talked about on the program before. We have you know, our elected officials, and a lot of, some of them seem that they're trying to get involved and help out and everything else with some of the issues uh, that are unique to veterans. But by, again, the leadership thing we were talking about on the previous segment, mm -hmm. you know, by the veterans and the military <clears throat> themselves taking a the leadership role to help one another, you know, connecting the dots, you know, that helps out a lot anyhow. What you're doing is great. Um, Dennis, do you have anything you want to? No, I'm just wondering uh, if uh, your organization is is a member of the Oahu and the Maui, um, in the Maui County uh, Veterans Councils. We have a council here. On in, on every in every county, there is a veterans council. You can okay. bring your message to uh, your peers at okay. these, and there's one in Maui too, I believe. Okay, we'll have to look okay. into that. Okay, we're getting down to wire now. I appreciate you coming in to share your information, Dennis. I know there's a lot of things that we need to talk about. Like say, you had to have you come back to cover some of the legislative um, issues that you're dealing with, also. But uh, in 30 seconds or less, is there anything? December the 8th, VA rep is having a Christmas gala on December the 8th at the Hawaiian Hilton Hotel. Yeah. So if you would like to get in contact with me, mm -hmm. please, I would love to give you that information. Yeah. My number is 250-8707, okay. um, 250-8707, or you can look up VA rep, mm -hmm. V-A-R-E-P dot net, Honolulu. Okay. Dennis? Okay. Well, well, the state legislature opens in January. And uh, there are some issues that uh, we will probably discuss issues such as uh, homes for veterans and homes for homeless veterans at the uh, uh, Oahu Veterans Council in January. I think they're, they're dark in December. So I invite okay. you to, uh, uh, I think the dues are like $30 oh a year. God, okay. okay. Anyway, thank you, thank yeah. you for having me. And, uh, you, you just say when, and I'll do my best to be here, Kelvin. Okay. I'm getting all choked up here, and I, I apologize for all this. Anyhow, I want to thank uh, my guests. Also, uh, we'll do a follow-up on a lot of things. But if you're out there, find out what's going on. I mean, if you were in the military and the veterans, you're aware of a few things. But do your homework. Find out what's going on. We'll do what we can as far as, again, uh, helping you to connect the dots. But uh, stay tuned and take care of one another. And God bless, and until that time. <laughs>